skating turns a nightmare. A 27-year-old engineer lured through a dating app. Once the girl reached her assaulter's home, she was allegedly given sedatives mixed in food. The survivor was then confined for nearly two months. Her assaulter raped and tortured her again and again. According to police, it was the mother of the accused who he was living with at that point of time and also now she was the one who in fact helped the victim escape. Another important aspect coming here is that the girl in question has stated that she was threatened that acid would be thrown on her face and she, was, she would in fact be killed if she did not pay up the money he was demanding and also did not agree to marrying this particular accused question in person. Finally, after two months, the girl managed to escape from the clutches of her assaulter. The police has arrested the accused and is now investigating if he is a serial offender. The dating game has moved online. Its rules have changed. Mirror now discusses the new rules of dating. How can you protect yourselves from the predators of online dating? You're watching the Urban Debate on Mirror Now, Fede Souza. Thank you for joining us. It's a date with the devil. You might have someone in your life who's currently on an online dating app. There's nothing wrong with it. It's the new normal. Maybe your teenager, maybe your friend, maybe someone, a sibling, someone you know in your social circle. It's like how WhatsApp has changed the way we communicate. Dating apps have changed the way we date. They've changed the way we meet people or we meet prospective partners. So dating apps also come with a whole new set of rules. Because now you're meeting somebody totally outside of your social circle. Now you're meeting someone who you have absolutely no room to verify. You can't call a friend and say, do you know this person? Have you checked him out? He's a decent person or not? And look at the number of cases that have popped up recently. The one that came out today where a young woman had been held against her will for two months because she visited a man and she went to his house and he laced and laced the sweets he gave her, the keer he gave her, he drugged her and then made videotapes, or made videos of her in compromising positions and used them to blackmail her. She was beaten, allegedly with a belt and her head was shaved until she escaped. A couple of months ago, another case that appeared was of a young woman who was dating a young man who pretended to be rich. When she discovered he was not rich, she asked for three lakh rupees as ransom from his father and then killed him. Here was a young man who died at the hands of the person he met on a dating app. Stalking, blackmail, rape and murder are not unusual. They're extremely scary. What we need to do is understand this new world. I want to point out again, no one is saying that you shouldn't use these apps. What we're saying is that you have to understand the risks of using a dating app and be very clear about what you're doing. We've put together a panel of experts who will help us answer questions. I'll also put a phone number at the bottom of the screen. You can call us. You needn't give us your name. We don't want to know your name. We don't want to know where you are from. If you have a question about abuse, if you have a question about online dating or app-based dating, ask that question. That's what we're here for. This is Roadblock Programming. I'm going to set aside the day's news and focus on the safety. Because given the speed at which we're moving down this brave new world of online dating, we need to know how to keep ourselves safe. Joining me in the studio, Ritesh Bhatia, cyber security expert. We also have Rajesh Singh, IG Cybercrime Maharashtra, Vikram Singh, former DGP Uttar Pradesh. So Shobita Kadam Bobby is the Director of Marketing and Strategy for, for Impresiaro Entertainment and Hospitality, which means that she focuses on keeping women safe at nightclubs and restaurants and bars where they meet with these people on apps. And that's a whole new world as well. Leher Sethi is a social activist. Anshumor is a comic and uh, Ritvika Bhattacharya is an author. I welcome all of you to this conversation. Uh, I'm going to start with Shobita. Uh, Shobita, what sort of, obviously restaurants and the rules have changed as well because people are meeting strangers now. There are blind dates taking place at restaurants Correct. that you run. How, what plans have you made or what things have you changed to keep your customers safer? So when it comes to uh, keeping our customers safe, 
uh, not just our customers, but also our employees, and if we're talking specifically about women, um, be extremely sensitive towards their needs. Uh, what we're doing is we're launching, we're in the process of launching a huge program, which we're hoping that the other restaurants and bars also adopt, mm -hmm. which educate people about how, like, how the code at a bar. Yes. So how you should be, how you should not be, in a nicer way. So, so people what's, what's the code? Understand if you were to share the code right now, what's the code at a bar? Um, I don't think we'd share it right now. It's something that we're going to be changing mm -hmm. on a regular basis, which will be made available okay. to women. Okay. So they know that they can call out for help when they need to. And also, I mean, every time we have a case where there is a lady who needs to be dropped home or is uncomfortable, we go out of our way to do that. But we're trying to make it official so people who bring in women for dates also realize that we're sensitive to that. So we're not ignoring it. So as of now, it, it is fair to say that if a woman is at a bar or a restaurant or a nightclub and she feels uncomfortable because the, she feels that the person she has met is not a safe person, she should walk up to a staff member and let that person Absolutely. know. Absolutely. Absolutely. We have had such cases also, but a lot of women are scared to speak up and I think that's really important for them to do. So they need to have that confidence. We also have a lot of women ba uh, uh, bouncers to make them feel a little comfortable with that. So we've mm -hmm. tried uh, in different ways, but now we're kind of officially launch a campaign that will ensure that A, women feel safe, and B, that guys know that women have the option yes. to walk up to somebody, so they are a little yes. on the watch. Make the excuse that you need to go to the restroom, find a woman staff member at, your, at the restaurant or the nightclub that you're at and ask for help. Uh, here's the important question. Brijesh Singh, IG Cybercrime Maharashtra, are you seeing an increase in the number of cases of assault or stalking or blackmail that stem from dating apps? Is there an increase in crime? Uh, you know, it's difficult to say because uh, many of these things are not reported. Uh, while I feel that predators, sexual predators, uh, fraudsters are yeah. more and more making use of the online space to prey on their victims. It is essential for the young people not to be so trusting, uh, to do some kind of search on whom they are interacting with. Uh, you know, you can, if, if an image has been presented to you as a profile image, if you can just do a reverse uh, image search with that, you would at least come to know where this image is from or whether this person has been using this image uh, as, as, as a fake profile. Uh, while we see that more and more people would be uh, subjected to uh, such kind of you know uh, a fraudulent relationship there is definitely a spurt in what we call matrimonial frauds where uh, okay. women have been you know engaged in a long term relationship online long term relationship and then been defrauded and defrauded for lakhs so when you say defrauded for lakhs how what is the modus operandi how does that normally work So the playbook goes like this, that uh, uh, this, these fraudsters, probably Nigerian in origin, uh, they have really refined their uh, tactics now. They register themselves as, as uh, you know, very good profiles. Uh, so there are, on the profile you'll find a good looking man and, the, and he would generally say that he is, let us say of Indian origin but has settled abroad, he is a doctor or a professional or an engineer, mm. then he would engage with the victim woman in a long term long term communication after that then he would say that he's either coming there to india or he's sending a gift so mm -hmm. he never video calls he just gives audio calls uh, chat chats for long develops trust and then he says that he's sending a gift normally he says that he's sending diamonds or something then there are local accomplices in india who would call saying that i'm it's normally a woman saying that i'm calling from customs or you know yes. airport or any other, they will name any agency and they would say that your consignment has come or your person has come and he's in some difficulty and you know to get that consignment released or that person released you'll need to pay money i have seen uh, you know cases where within a week women have paid up to 50 lakh rupees in maharashtra and and most women also do not come forward and report this this has become a very 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 big threat and uh, people need to be educated about this it has become a big threat and like I said, our phone number is at the bottom of your screen and you can pick up the phone and join us. Ritesh uh, Bhatia, we talked about some cases, uh, you know, there's some screenshots that we were talking about as well. Blackmail has become rampant 
from a cyber security point of view, what are the kinds of cases you're encountering that stem from online dating or dating apps? So see, there are, I would say there are like three kind of things. Uh, one is, which is called as catfishing. Okay. Here, the objective is not to get the money or anything. It's actually to lure into a relationship and then try to, you know, get intimate and all mm -hmm. that. Okay. And so uh, the motive here or, or is sex. Pure. Is sex. Yes. It's purely physical and all. The other scam is like the dating scams or the online scam, which Bridget Sir just uh, mentioned about it. The third thing is, which is very uh, alarming and which is really rising, is sextortion. Okay. So here... Uh, is that the official term for it? That's the official term, okay. sextortion. So you're okay. extorting so that you can get continue sex. Continue to get sex yeah, from that yeah, person. Which is similar to the, the case or, that we were talking about, where yes. he makes one video and then says, I will release this video until you, unless you continue to have sex with me. Unless, yeah, exactly. Okay. So this is what is called as a like, the sextortion. Now, now that's rising. I mean, in the past one year, I have got 17 cases. Okay. And none of these guys want to go and report it to the police which is very sad. Ideally, they should report. You know, there is a, like a sense of guilt or shame or anything, you know. But ideally, they, they really need to go forward. Uh, because I, I must tell you, with my experiences, of the, at least with the Maharashtra Cyber Cell, they are very good. They are very proactive, I would say that. So they really need to uh, go over there. Uh, what is really alarming is, you know, uh, there are more men who are victims than women. Yes. So up till now, we were just thinking it's just the women. You know, actually, there are more men of, in this extortion scam. what sextortion. In sextortion. It's, yeah, because, okay. <laughs> you know, so I, I would say they're more vulnerable for reasons best So, so hang on. So are you, are, are these men being sextorted for money or are they being sextorted for sex? They are, now, here it comes. Now, here they are sextorted for money. Okay. So, they have already, like, you know, they went to a particular place, like a bar or something like that. They had, or on the video itself, they performed certain acts which the other person recorded. recorded it and now the other person could be of the same gender also so if mm. it's a man we, you know we would be thinking it's a okay. woman okay. but no it turns out to be a man itself okay. Okay. and so this is which is like really widespread and happening a lot Okay, and, and basically that video is then used to extract either money or, or ransom or, or ransom, something else. Ransom, money, yes. Okay. Uh, how does one how does one avoid that? Are, they, are there a couple of rules? I mean, the straight off rule would be never go to somebody else's house. Always meet at a public place. Yeah, I mean, see, see, the number one thing is over here, we need to understand the modus operandi, which is over here is they are establishing a particular profile. From there, they are coming up, they're mm. coming with a relationship. And now they want to tell you one thing. Ki, you know, I am deactivating this account because I don't like this particular platform. They could, you know, any particular dating uh, platform. So they will take you to a private platform like mm. a WhatsApp or a Telegram, something where they can do one to one. So even if their profile is deactivated by the uh, people who are running that platform, yes. this guy will say, OK, he'll come there. Mm. So that is one sign where, you're, you know, uh, the, the other one is he will start itself with such a flowery language mm. and flowery words and, you know, as if just you're the woman of the dreams or you're the man of the dreams immediately. Yes. So falling in love within minutes. Huh. So that is where the anti the unusual, uh, very unusual, unusual quick, behavior. Okay. Right. And Arch they would never come on yes. video. They would never come. They would on. never come on video. They would never come. They'll ask you to come, but they huh. will never come. Anshumor is a comic joining us out of Delhi. Anshumor, I know that uh, I would advise all of my friends never ever to date app based in Delhi, at least. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, it's just not Delhi. I mean, uh, when you look at the internet, uh, it's just so easy to now get in touch with people, right? And, it, and again, like you said in the beginning, that the whole idea is that these apps shouldn't exist. The, the whole idea is that people should be educated about what happens on these apps. Hmm. Um, apart from being a comic, I'm also a father to a 17-year-old. And, and I know that, you know, for me, it's not about putting a stop to him going on these kind of apps rather than just telling him that what to expect, what not to expect. And, at, you know, at, at the most, just use your common sense, first of all, when you're interacting with people on these apps. So what advice do you give your 17 year old? Because I'm sure there are parents who are watching right now who might find that useful. Yeah. So. 
first first and foremost uh, i've asked him to understand what happens on these apps do his research and there's enough in more articles where you can find what really happens or what to expect what not to expect right uh, he shouldn't be surprised with fake profiles he shouldn't be surprised with certain activities people just like uh, you know it was mentioned that just somebody falling in love in 2 minutes these are things that he should be expecting to happen on these apps second is choose apps wisely because there are dime a dozen apps out there and you know some of them you don't even know where they came from where they existed just choose them wisely and then everything that happens after that that initial contact whatever the right swipe left swipe whatever it is right everything that happens after that be conscious of what you are doing keep people informed whether it's your friend whether it's your parents whoever right just keep everybody somebody informed about what is happening uh, and, and never trust somebody who has a profile which says mandy 1234 you know uh, ask for real names there's enough and more you can do on social media to check out somebody's profile uh, even if the dating app profile is wrong if you get the right information you can check facebook twitter a lot of other things right but make sure that you understand who you're interacting with before yes. you take the step of meeting anywhere right uh, we have people who have already begun to call in uh, but uh, i will ask vikram singh for his advice vikram singh um, i know that you interact with a lot of young people What is your advice to them about dating online and dating apps? Hey, I'm so happy that you have broached a topic which normally people are scared even of talking about. I'm handling 4000 international students in my university and my advice is whenever you go to an app for a purpose like this, it is nothing but an unmitigated disaster on one way road to nothing but harakiri. if a person is so unsure of himself that he does not disclose his name and his profile and if he does disclose his profile a 65 year old man looking as if he is something around 25 a man who has done up his scalp his teeth and his jaw look as if something like rock hudson or something and then he poses to be something like a cross between henry ford and <laughs> sylvester stallone make no mistake about it if such a man does not know how to project himself i know my learned friends have said it is just sex torsion it's not just sex torsion it is the first step to perversion it is the first step to human trafficking drugs and school of scandal there are so many But, healthy you know, but and mr singh mr singh i don't know if you should be writing off online dating all together because this is let's be honest this is This is the mode of dating today. It's not something we can we can we can't say don't use it. I don't think that would be fair. Um, let me ask Leher Sethi. Leher Sethi is a social pay. activist. Leher Sethi, do you think pay. it's fair to ask people not to use? I don't say. I mean, you yes. can easily dismiss that. May, may I? May I just okay, counter? Okay. All right. When you um, read, when you go to any app, you see yeah. terms and condition. When you sign up as terms and condition, the terms and condition say that we will access all your details, your photos from your Facebook account. from the cookies and the cookie reservoir in your phone your data your call data and everything you are literally offering everything about yourself on a silver platter to the adversary or to the person who may misuse it the probability is anybody who's phishing who's data mining is not going to post a good thing about you in any case therefore my advice a one liner is keep away from dating apps there are hundreds of ways of getting friends normally and in the real world going into the virtual world in an unknown realm stepping in out to darkness is courting the recipe of disaster so my advice if you were to take it for whatever it's worth keep right, quick, away from quick, dating uh, apps. quick response from leher sethi leher sethi what's your response to okay, that i yeah okay i think uh, sir that your uh, um, you know advice is uh, fine but i think you are uh, looking at a very small um, you know um, Uh, uh through a very small lens out here you see there is nothing wrong with dating online as long as you are careful also what you are saying is uh, regardless of any app you know not just dating apps any app that you put up your information on you are sort of you know signing up for their terms and conditions when you shop online when you do anything online so that we can't kind of help it's just we are there now you know mm. so um i know a lot of people who've uh, met their life partners on through online dating apps and i don't see there is any uh, there 
uh, anything wrong in doing that as long as you're careful. So whenever you travel to meet somebody that you're meeting through an online dating app, you should never ask them to come pick you up or, you know, allow them to drop you, for example. You should take your own vehicle, you know, you should ensure that you meet them in a public place. You don't yes. uh, meet them somewhere private for the first time or maybe even the second or the third time that you're meeting them. These are precautions that you should take. You must inform someone in your family or your friends uh, list where you're going to meet them and who it is that you're going to meet with their name and their phone number. Hmm. That is very important so that in case you don't come back home on time or there is a cause to worry, then they can reach the other person that you're supposed to be meeting as well. You know, also when you're meeting, when you decide to meet somebody through an online dating app, you can Google them beforehand or you can go through their social media handles because today, if you're not out there on social media, then, you know, there's definitely something fishy about you and you can see who their friends are. Usually you do have some common friends. So it's it's not as jaundiced, you know. I I don't have mm. such Vikram a. Vikram Singh wants to respond. Vikram, Vikram yes, Singh, quick rebuttal. It's very important to be careful. B very excellent advice there. Uh, the fact that you should always let somebody, friend, family, somebody know where you are. So in case you don't come home at time on time, they know where to start looking at least. Uh, Vikram Singh, go ahead. You seem to disagree. If I may submit that uh, in uh, wherever I see a group of 40 or 50 young men and women I mean going widely on their keyboards on their smartphones well I have systems and ways of checking up firstly I feel that it doesn't sound very appropriate and usual for a person because it, it presupposes that you have a lot of spare time money and effort firstly to go about then in the virtual world I'd say that what do you want A or B B happens to be somebody like uh, somebody looking like a film star. Mm -hmm. Then go to window seat. Somebody who uh, is well built or who was lesser built. Then D, you go to somebody. At the end of the day, you end up find a person who's totally tottering, who personally seems to be excavated from the mummies of Egypt, and then he poses <laughs> to be something like a film star. I really don't know. I have yet to come across a single person who happens to be satisfied with online dating. Correct me if I'm wrong. Perhaps right. you can say the, that. The, but there are some gap, cases. No, no, Vikram Singh. There are some cases person. where Sir, people I have. have yes. a cousin. I have a cousin who, yeah. Or, or one second. I, I we, we, are, we are. We are. Got married in December last year to someone that she was dating on Tinder. So there are people who do find their life partners and fall in love in reality through these online dating apps. There's nothing wrong as long as you are careful okay. of who you're meeting okay. and how you're meeting them. All right. Uh, we have our, our phones have started Certainly buzzing. Not. Like I, I told that your one second, is Mr. Very lucky yes. And yes, yes. Bless our, your phones, cousin. our phones have started buzzing. Like I pointed out at the beginning of the show. You do not need to tell us your name or anything about you. If you have a question or a, or a cautionary tale that you want to share, pick up the phone and call us. We have one individual on the phone line right now, uh, our anonymous caller. Go ahead. We can hear you. Uh, hi. I just want to share what happened to me some 10 years ago okay. in Bangalore. Okay. Uh, I just want. Uh, I just went on a dating site, which is like a gay site, uh, mm -hmm. since I'm now gay. Yes. And this was like, uh, those days we don't have this video call or anything as such, Skype or anything, you know. Okay. So we just go by the pictures, what they show. We just believe them and then we talk to them over phone and then we go on a date. Mm. And this between two guys who is a gay, another gay, supposed yes. to be, I thought. And this happened in 2004 or something on an Independence Day night. And it was raining in Bangalore. And I was working for a call center that time. And uh, I went on a date of... Like it was in the night, I had a shift, so I just went at uh, nine o'clock for a eight o'clock for a date. Yes, yes. What in happened? The evening. So, like, uh, when I went on a date, this guy was talking very nicely over phone. But when I went inside, he just took me in a car, and suddenly inside the car there were like four other guys who were sitting yes. behind. So they just covered my face with a dark cloth, black cloth. They took me somewhere. They just said, "Don't make any noise. Uh, be quiet." Otherwise, we'll be in a soup. So they took me somewhere where I don't know. I was covered in a black cloth. That was like trying to get out of that Maruti van. With, and uh, I couldn't do anything resist because there were five guys. And uh, they took me somewhere and uh, they put me there inside a garage, mm. which was like totally dark and everything. And inside the garage, they put a, an yellow light, yellow bulb and said, you gave me your credit card, everything. And uh, you, 
I told him like I have a work tonight. I have to go for work. He said, "No, you just call your office right now and tell them that you are not coming for work and you are going back to your uh, city on some emergency." Mm. So I just called my friend in call center. I couldn't do anything because he was holding a iron rod on my head. If I say anything, he he was ready to beat me. So like um, I just got I just. spoke to my friend and said that I won't be coming for work that night and uh, the whole night I was there with these people and they took my credit card they withdrew money they asked all the details about my family uh, and god I didn't reveal about my family much i just said i'm very poor i just look good but i'm very poor all that story i created and i said i'm the only son i didn't tell about my sister or brother or anything and um, I just tell that told my parents are very old pensioner and just what right. and and how did you get out of there uh, that's one thing this was happening and uh, there was this people were doing it for the past 10 days or 15 days like that that month that very month in august 2003 mm-hmm. or 4 mm-hmm. and um, like there was this guy from maharashtra who his friend got kidnapped same way similar situation like me it happened to him yes so that guy he didn't reveal it to the police but he just uh, told his friend about all that and that guy was sent back to maharashtra from bangalore these people took a ticket and sent them back saying don't inform anyone to police or anything you just go back to your city so that boy he went back and he called his friend and said this happened in bangalore in banshankri these are the people who are doing it please form a network and catch these people through a mm. public telephone booth during that yes. time there was like public yes 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 booth. yes so thank god because of the, the god sent damar who was from maharashtra that guy he just came and uh, he just to inform the police that something is happening in this area in this particular place okay. and we have to and and that's how you that's how you got out brijesh singh does this surprise you is this unusual or have you heard multiple cases like this no uh, i have seen cases like this in the past where people have been lured uh, by the use of uh, an online media you know uh, and as i told you there are a lot of predators uh, let's say even pedophiles who are sitting there who make profiles of young children and they groom people over a long period one more very sinister thing which uh, i think i should warn everybody about especially people who are working in forces or or ha- handling sensitive portfolios is that there are fake profiles uh, set up by intelligence agencies to honey trap people uh, and there have been cases in the army where people have been honey trapped uh, and they have been you know uh, let us say asked to uh, strip nude and then th- this has been used to blackmail them to devil's national secrets also these are cases which have which have been handled and which have been detected so especially regarding people who are in forces or who are uh, handling sensitive portfolios they have to be extremely careful as to uh, you know how they behave online or yes. you know whom they date otherwise i feel for young people it's a very legitimate activity mm. uh, and and already you know other people have told as to what precautions should be taken once i think these precautions are taken uh, it is it's essential to go slow and to verify and not to immediately trust otherwise i think they, these these dating apps uh, are harmless and uh, uh, okay for young people to indulge in but especially if you are handling something sensitive then you have to be deeply careful in fact uh, we have a call uh, right now aditi is on the phone line from dehradun uttarakhand go ahead please we can hear you uh, hi say good evening good how evening. are you um, fine, thank you i am so glad uh, that uh, for once some channel and you most of all have brought this uh, you know topic up on your channel today because i am uh, this this i i'm sorry i don't know the gentleman who was just speaking with you um yes rajesh singh is, in it, ig of cyber crime in maharashtra he's a he's a very senior right. police officer yes all right sir good evening sir i am aditi uh, sir i've been married to an army officer for one and a half years now um i am going through a case of separation because of the fact that my husband was married to me and he had a fake profile on jeevansathi.com and he was looking out for women to get married to while being married to me he is a serving army officer army officer i am separating out from him now there is no way that i'll ever go back to him but i want to know what precautions are are these agencies or these apps 
or even the armed forces taking to ensure that girls like me don't get affected my whole life has turned topsy turvy because of this and i want to tell you here i would like to bring out that the website people have been extremely supportive mm. when i sent my uh, marriage registration certificate to them a copy of that they immediately deleted the profile yes uh i i was in fact i was so glad and uh, i was shocked my right. world turned around yes so I, so what about say let's just ask brijesh singh that question mr singh uh, fake profiles is something you brought up uh, ritesh bhatia brought it up that people do put fake profiles uh, married people pretending to be single maybe for money maybe for sex we don't know what the motive is but it's th this sort of thing and this would also then fall into that category here someone who works with the armed forces who is on a dating site Wait, this was an avoidable uh, tragedy can you repeat the I question i mean you very, want to ask if the, the lady uh, but am i advise sorry sorry uh, so my first to brijesh singh please uh, brijesh singh do these do these apps have any sort of security feature because these people i mean the question she's asking is here's an individual who's lying about himself a married person who's pretending to be single and he's with the armed forces so they will be gullible women who will fall for this I think you know uh, that is one difference between these sites and these apps that on sites you have some kind of you know confirmation wherein a person would have some network some friends let's say if you go to facebook you would find that he would have put up some pictures though it's also also easy to put up a fake profile on facebook but there is some kind of verifiability there there would be some kind of bio available as to where the person has studied or you know where he goes to work Mm. Uh, or let us say has checked in into a location mm -hmm. so there has to be a consistency which can be cross checked but on these apps it's just a profile and you don't know anything about that uh, maybe you know it it's uh, essential to verify each information before you take important decisions important decisions like going out on a date with that person or probably you know even taking a drink offered by that person deciding to travel with that person deciding where to meet uh, it it is the general sense which we put in our children where we say that don't trust strangers so just because a person's profile is available on uh, on on an app it doesn't mean that you know that person or or uh, based on the information that the person has given to you it doesn't know mean that you know the person that person may be entirely somebody different in fact i have find found cases where there have been multiple people mm. multiple fraudsters you know pretending to be one person so one person is uh, used to call while the other person used to chat and there is to be so it's it's like it may not be even a single person it may be a group of fraudsters who is impersonating a single person uh, who may not be even a real person it may be a fake profile where there are a group of people who are you know trying to defraud somebody yes uh, as regards forces i think uh, there have been policies policies regarding uh, the use of social media forces have been very stringent because there are very uh, uh, enhanced efforts from pakistan side to honey trap Uh, people from our forces these cases have been detected also so there is a social media policy social media yes. use policy which All has right, come in that, place yes. wherein you know there are restrictions now on on use of yeah yeah uh, i saw anshu more put his hand up and i know that everybody one has a comment at this point so we'll open this up to the panel anshu go ahead please yeah i i think you know since since now dating uh, has moved online uh and it's it's technology in use i think technology can be further used to do cross checks uh, like it was mentioned right quickly move the conversation to multiple other platforms you can move it to facebook that's where you can do at least one level of check uh, about that person his friends or her friends whatever uh, also when you're going and meeting somebody use technology put your location services on have a friend track your location at least for the first time or the second time that you're meeting that person uh so you got to take precautions research after research has shown that you know over 60% of these profiles are either exaggerated or are fake so that is something that these guys should expect uh it's not something that should come as a surprise and hence they should take precautions to check that person before uh they go and meet that person uh rutika bhattacharya is an author who joins us right now What is your stand on using dating apps? Do you believe the people should just be careful or do you think that it's something we shouldn't do at all? 
Uh, so it's really interesting. You know, I've been hearing all the comments. And essentially, when uh, dating apps had been created, the market that they had been created for, the social construct in those markets are very different than the social construct in an Indian market, where the concept of dating itself is, I would say, relatively new, uh, especially when it comes to uh, a significant part of the population going into the act of dating, let alone using a dating app or let alone using a website. Um, I think what is happening, and, and from listening to the comments, one thing is evident, is that our social construct of how we date and socialize is changing much quicker than our policy or law and order can kind of follow, uh, which there is nothing which we can do about it except be wise and be mindful about the context in which we are in. We are not in you know, a Western democracy. We are not in an, uh, an, a Far Eastern Asian country. We are in India. And in that case, we have to be mindful that we have to take more precautions than would usually be the case when using a Tinder or when using any of the other dating apps. Um, Ms. Mr. Singh, I know Vikram Singh, you had a point to make the earlier question. Go ahead, please. Yes, I wanted to say that there are bouncers, take adequate precautions, due diligence, do your homework. With this kind of a preparation, are you going for battle or are you going for dating? With this kind of a preparation to go for a dating, I think it's more prudent to sit at home and enjoy popcorn than go for a dating with this kind of an armory and an arsenal to go for dating. You have heard story after story of unmitigated and undiluted disasters. The probability is that in 10 cases, there's going to be a disaster. Probably one in 100 is going to be a success story as the lady had just mentioned. I think there are better and perhaps more foolproof ways mm. to date than to go for an app. My personal uh, advice again would be that to be doubly sure before you venture out into the unknown. This is a very sensitive matter about pertaining to your safety, your security and of your life and to take a calculated risk is okay but to be foolhardy, mm. I don't think it is right to be foolhardy in matters that concern your own security when the whole world is beset with predators and those trying to ensnare you, trying to extort money out of you and trying to video film you in a situation of compromise therefore discretion being the better part of valor, I would say keep safe distance from dating apps. Uh, we have another anonymous caller on the phone, uh, on the line right now. A trainee journalist, I understand. Go ahead. Our anonymous caller, go ahead. Yeah. Yes, go yeah, ahead. Yes, hi. We can hear you. Yes, can uh, thank you for, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate that you are bringing up this issue, this topic. You know, as soon as I saw the headlines and I felt so glad that you know, yeah, I understand. I, even I am also a 20 year old girl. And I would want to share that, you know, being uh, the age of this trend, people are, are in a uh, lookout for having a relationship, to be involved, to be uh, to enjoy this, uh, this way of life. Uh, it, and most of them are talking about culture and all. It's not about culture, but uh, I feel that, you know, anything that doesn't promote a human for any good cause that is uh, that 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 cannot be valid in the society. If that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, the... Uh, so, but I'm, have, you, I'm have you had an experience or have your friends no, have experiences? I'm not having any experience, but then I have seen my friends. Why uh, at the end of the day, they become the prey to the... Uh, they become a prey to that boy or that... Uh, whoever it may be. So, becoming a prey is not good at the end of the day because uh, there's a lot of career ahead. Uh, even if it is a 40-year-old also, there's a, there's a career ahead. We have okay. to think about that, not just, you know... And being deceived by some other person at the very first time, you know, it's ridiculous. And I don't think so these kind of apps can encourage anybody to any uh, good okay. cause or promote any, uh, you know, moral issues in the society. All and right. When yes, coming... yes. So be careful. I think the, uh, it, let me just, you know, right now, I, I want to ask one question of the entire panel, and that is advice. And um, Shobita, you bring in advice that perhaps nobody else has at this point as to what to do. When you're in a restaurant or you're in a public place and you find out that the person you're with is making you uncomfortable in any way. So, and, and this is blanket advice for anyone. What, right. what, what advice would you have? So, I mean, one of the things after hearing everybody um, is that this can happen anywhere. It doesn't have to happen only on an online dating app. It could happen on Facebook. It could very well happen on a LinkedIn, which is a professional website. It could also happen in person when you meet somebody. So it's... The idea is that whoever it is that you meet, you need to be a little conscious about what you're doing, how far you're going, 
what you're allowing that person into. I think if you go out on a first date, you know, have more mocktails and less cocktails and be a little alert. Um, make sure that if you're getting, like, listen to your intuition. If you feel uncomfortable, reach out to somebody at the bar. Everybody at the bar will be happy to help. Mm. Nobody wants to have a situation in a bar or a restaurant, and definitely not at social, where we, you know, see a lady uncomfortable and we, we let her be. Does it also make sense to choose the place yourself? So go to yes. a restaurant or a bar that you're familiar with, yes. where the staff knows you, yes. they've seen you before. Yes, and it makes it, absolute yes. sense to do that. Because if you know the staff there, you know that you're comfortable. But even if you happen to go to a place where you don't know the staff, the staff will still help you out hmm. if you let them know. But the, the key is letting them know that you're uncomfortable. And I think how to let them know is what is important because you don't want to scream it out in front of the guy. So what is the system that the bar is creating for you where you're able to express yourself but not really put yourself in an awkward position and make sure that you get home safe, which is exactly what social is working on right now. All right, we have another anonymous caller on the phone line. Anonymous caller number three, go ahead. We can hear you. Yeah, hello, Fai. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead, please. Yeah, okay. Thank you for taking this topic on Mirror now. It's, uh, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, so... I'm the youngest in my family, there mm -hmm. have, there have, and I have been looking, uh, I mean, my family has been looking for a groom for our family, one of our family members. Yes. So it's been more than a year now, and I have also been helping my parents out with this. But I and my parents have always been let down with a number of fake profiles. Okay. Which is an issue today, not just for the dating website, but also for the matrimonial web website. It's not... It's just a different name, but basically has the same purpose. So, the, pre yes. the precautions that the user needs to take is understandable. Not everyone is has the knowledge of IT and security and everything. But, okay, understandable. The precaution needs to be there. But what uh, what's the other side of it? How strict is the law with the website, with the it app? And are there the norms that need to be in place mm. so that such fake profiles are not being run or op by, operated by fake people? So what, what is the law side of this? What is the law That's side point. of it? Uh, Brijesh Singh was listening very carefully. He is uh, the IG of Cybercrime Maharashtra. Brijesh Singh, go ahead, please. So one thing is that uh, these uh, platforms and these uh, services, uh, uh, I think they have a modicum of responsibility. We are in touch with them and we are asking them to implement a lot of measures uh, to have some kind of secondary authentication. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also feel that, you know, uh, they should put some kind of uh, a mining engine at the back which finds these profiles and, uh, you know, sort of helps to delete them or at least uh, mark anomalies. If they find that very sketchy information is put or let us say photographs which are being reused uh, are put or uh, information which is not verified even after repeated requests uh, uh, by the site, then I think they should red flag. They should have some kind of verification. Uh, legally, I think apart from the criminal part which uh, the person can you know, lodge a complaint for fraud if, if he or she is defrauded. Uh, for money or for something else or is blackmailed. Apart from that, the platform has a responsibility under the IT Act and one can go to an adjudicating officer under Section 43. So, Section 43 is a civil remedy where you can claim compensation. And I would request people who have been defrauded to make these websites also a party because they have a responsibility. If they are putting up these services, then they should be responsible for what they put up. Okay? Absolutely. Um, uh, Ritesh, the same question that I had asked, uh, what are your pieces of advice right now for anybody who's using online dating apps, uh, matrimonial websites or online dating websites? Go slow. Okay. The thing is we go too fast because overall, the, you know what happens is uh, this is a, this is a kind of a hyper relationship. I okay. would say the you know the cyber mediated relationships is very hyper in nature. 
uh, what is happening it's quickly and it's it uh, you know the i love you and the smileys and the sticky and you know all this those is sort of things. anonymity that allows for yeah, anonymity more comfort, plus yes. you know it becomes like you, you know it comes out too loud on you and what happens is also the other thing is you know when somebody is written okay i love you and you look so gorgeous and all the text remains over there and you mm. keep reading that text again and again and that's the huh. reason this becomes a hyper relationship so we really need to understand we need to slow down be very careful of these guys. but most importantly don't be in a rush to give out your personal information anything mm. that's so sensitive information and definitely not images so and videos so i read one of the pieces uh, of advice was that start open a, if if you're going to get on one of these apps open a separate email id which if you know which you share open you know separate details so don't give someone access from which they can hack into your email id or hack into your bank account or access you in any other way other than to just chat. well then he'll be using some sort see these campuses are very very smart they'll use some sorts of vpn and all i would rather tell them to come you know let them come onto a particular platform wherein if something goes wrong the law enforcement can track which back. is that particular platform i mean you know if you're chatting on facebook or even if it's a mobile number okay we are sure you're calling them up you're figuring it out okay this is a particular thing is there the mobile number also could be a particular fake one but again you know doing a background check as bridges uh, said is very very important so we can go back so it's easier for the police to track a mobile yeah, because, number yeah because if you are on a particular messenger or something like that or any platform wherein you know the law enforcement can go and ask the ideal would be to be on the same platform where you got connected so for hmm. example if it is uh, you know uh, jeevansathi.com and all they have those particular option because they are there in india itself <coughs> You yes. can go to them and you can ask them, okay, what went wrong? The law enforcement can go over there, but you know, yes. like Tinder and all, where we'll approach them. So basically, use a platform that the uh, you know that the law enforcement agencies can actually track and they can actually uh, trace this person and find this person. Uh, yes, let her say it. Go ahead, please. Let her say it. Go ahead. See that. Yeah, see, say I don't think that's very practical. You see, one okay. of the main reasons that people go on to these dating apps and websites is because they're not being able to find people on their own, right? Which is why you go into the virtual world and try to locate somebody. That means you're not finding someone at your workplace. You haven't been able to come across somebody in your family or friends, which is why you're going on an app like that, right? so it defeats the whole purpose if you're saying that you know you go to jeevan sathi is for weddings right what if you just want to meet somebody and date them and hang out with them and just get to know some new people and make friends you know it doesn't always have to be dating dating and then fall in love and there is nothing wrong in that as long as you're just being careful you know today we have a shortage of time on our hands we're all so busy you know we are stuck in traffic for hours the whole point of these apps is that no matter where you are you can access this dating thing and you know whenever as per your convenience reply to these messages and go through people's profiles and skip through them and maybe find someone that you think has something in common with you you know so if you get along with somebody and then you exchange numbers and then you get to know them better i don't think that there is anything wrong in then meeting them as long as you're being very very careful you're doing a background check sure. on them finding out that oh maybe you know i have a couple of common friends with them because right. now i've always also Ritvika, checked them out on Ritvika facebook ritvika bhattacharya has a, has has a point Twitter, also seen their pictures on instagram yes ritvika go ahead yeah Yeah so I think you know uh, while we all talk about the need for background check and seeing what you're doing I think there's a selection bias in who actually goes on these apps right you are kind of looking for someone to say oh you're so beautiful or you're so mm. handsome or you know I do want to see you you the the a lot of the population or a lot of the people who are going on these apps actually want that right which is what they're seeking out and I think I'm echoing what Leher is saying to some extent um and so asking them at that point to take a step back and to start a relationship on a note of caution saying i don't even know if you're real or if you're fake i think that is why it's good advice it's not possible to execute on it because you're not going in with with that mind frame that this person i'm talking to can potentially be an extortionist you and can potentially potentially mind. cheat me in fact you're thinking oh my goodness why didn't i do this before i'm so good looking in fact right <laughs> so so the point is that it's it's good advice but it's not executable Uh, so we have to figure out some other way because I think otherwise we'll just be going around in circles on this. Well, you know, um, 
one of the things we have to realize is that not just extortion, we are also talking about exactly stalking and said. rape and murder, uh, you know, and worse. Uh, you know, yeah. Anshu, Anshu Moore has his hand up. Anshu, this is, the, this is my concern. We're not just talking about extortion and fake profiles. We're talking about the worst kind of criminal that's lurking on the internet. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's, the, the thing is not about not being on the apps or, or doing it in real life or meeting people in real life. Uh, there is a little sense of optimism about youth, right? Where they believe that things will not go wrong for them. Complexities mm. won't happen. And I think that's where the caution part of it comes in. Also, if you look at the behavior on these apps, these apps are based on acceptance and rejection, right? And psychologically, that plays onto anybody who's on these apps. And at some point, uh, the advice could be go slow, but there is a desperation to then have a match, meet somebody. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's where possibly you would make those mistakes. Uh, and again, I would come back to the point whether, you know, for my son or as a parent, that educate uh, the youngsters on what to expect on these apps yes. and tell them then what to do. Uh, use common sense. That's the best thing to do. Just use common sense and move forward uh, on these relationships. In fact, uh, Priyanka is on the phone line from Bangalore. Priyanka, go ahead. Hi, Faye. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, basically, I was not someone who chose to get onto any dating site. Um, I was fighting a court case with somebody and I won the case. And, um, you know, uh, just to take the revenge out or basically to get a little vengeful, he posted my morphed pictures, put up my name, my number, my home address, the street address, my family background, everything on a dating site. I was hounded by calls like 3 a.m. in the morning. I answered like 300 calls. I replied to close uh, about 200 WhatsApp messages telling each and every one that this is, you know, my number and I have not posted any profile. And the app that I'm uh, talking about is Tinder. Mm. I was unable to lodge a, a complaint in the cyber cell. One is because uh, the profile was brought down within uh, five hours of being uploaded. The second is the cops are not at all helpful. They just turn you back and they, they don't want uh, you to go to them and probably lodge a complaint because they're just so comfortable in their own seats. So, you know, that's basically what has happened with me. <laughs> Mm. That's that's the unfortunate story, and I and I do realize that we have a lot more people on the phone line right now, and we'll continue to take up this, uh, you know, this conversation because there, there's there's a good side and a bad side to everything. At least uh, the service that we can provide, or the service that we ought to do as the media, is to present the truth to you. So you can caution the people in your lives, the ones who are going out right now, the ones who are using the dating apps. Tell them about what you've heard. Tell them that we've had people from various, uh, you know, expertise, various forms of expertise who've told us that if you are meeting someone on a blind date from an app, first of all, try and verify the person's profile. Try and make sure that this individual actually does exist and it is not a fake profile. If you are meeting them, it makes more sense to meet them in a public place, perhaps in a restaurant or a nightclub that you are familiar with, where the staff knows you. If you're uncomfortable at any point, walk over to the staff and tell them that you're uncomfortable and ask for help. Always be willing to ask for help. Let a family member or a friend know where you are, what address you are at and who you're visiting. Never visit a person's home. Avoid as far as possible in the first few weeks going to that person's home at all. Always see them at a public place. Avoid drinking too much in the first few meetings. Always keep an eye on your drink. Don't allow that your drink out of your sight even for a second because your drink might be laced with drugs. Slow down, verify all of the details and share as few uh, pieces of information as you can. Do not upload or do not share videos or your photographs with anyone online unless you know them personally. As Vikram Singh pointed out, uh, with all of these precautions, are you actually dating or are you going out to battle? But it does seem like you're going out to battle and not being this prepared could lead to some horrid, horrible things. We will continue to try and help as much as we can and put out as much information as we can. Let us know, get in touch. Uh, my personal email ID is fay.disouza at timesgroup.com. If you need help, get in touch and we'll make sure that you do in fact get the help that you need. Stay safe and stay happy. Thanks for watching.